The Department of Roads has released the traffic death numbers for April in Nebraska, and they are not good. Of the 16 people killed in crashes, none, none were wearing seatbelts. We've recently told you about efforts to toughen the state's seatbelt laws. And tonight, reporter Kelly Bartnick is back on the Buckle Up Beat with stories of seatbelt survivors. Journeys take us all kinds of places. But the roads were just slick enough where we lost control. The roads that lead there are not always smooth. Side window, and I, the only thing I remember is uh, me and Thomas yelling for help. Thomas Halber and Aaron Gosh did not reach their destination last August. And then we just try to like straighten out, but we just hydroplane. Photos show Gosh's Honda totaled after a crash on Bob Boozer Drive. We were going from center towards Pacific, so we were on the right side, obviously, and then we slid sideways into the side of the guardrail, so it came into the passenger side. The pictures do not show Halber trapped under the guardrail for more than an hour, cut out by the jaws of life. We both realized that it could have taken either of our lives and easily, and we're, we're very thankful that we're both still here. And Halber and Gosh are seatbelt survivors. Both believe they are here today because they buckled up. There's a high probability that, you know, many people are going to be involved in crashes every day, every week, and of course every year. Rose White is a big buckle backer. Speaking for AAA Nebraska, she can tell you the stats, that a highway crash happens every 14 minutes. There have been 78 crash deaths in Nebraska already this year, and that number could hit 300 by year's end. It's such a little act. It can be done so easily. It doesn't take any effort. Seatbelts also saved her son. The, the outcome could have been completely different for me if my son did not buckle up looking at the vehicle that he was in, knowing that it was a total loss, knowing that it rolled three times. He could have very easily have been killed. Stephen White served as a pilot in the Iowa Air National Guard. His 2010 Christmas trip home from the Middle East was cut short 50 miles outside of Des Moines when his truck took a tumble on an icy I-80. He does remember the crashing uh, noise of the crumpling metal, the flying glass and the debris, uh, but he remember it was difficult climbing out of the vehicle itself because the seats were no longer in their usual positions. He also remembered his mother's advice to buckle up and walked away. He's made uh, dramatic advancements in his career that would not have happened if he had a serious injury, or he may not have been able to stand up at his brother's wedding if he suffered a serious injury. My parents said that it was really scary getting the phone call. They said it's probably one of the worst phone calls you can ever get is saying that your son got transferred to a, the hospital through an ambulance. And Gosh still has no memory of his accident. Halber spent three days in ICU and missed more than a month of his junior year at Millard North. Neither of the teens will have lasting effects from their crash. Now they are part of a seatbelt survivors club. Anyone can join it. Safety advocates say more drivers should because people who buckle up live. I don't really think it was a coincidence. I think it was just like an accident happened, but my seatbelt decided to be there. And in Omaha, Kelly Bartnick, KMTV Action 3 News.